Kings in chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. Good to see the crowd filled out at 8.30. It was slim pickings, but uh, glad you are here. 1 Kings 19. One of our churches in the Philippines, they, they have fishermen, and the fishermen have to fish early. And uh, they have, I think, a 5 a.m. service uh, there. And uh, so one of the churches that we started, and uh, I said, well, if we want to preach at that, I'm going to let Brother Andrew go there and do that service. And uh, so 5 a.m. to the fishermen. And uh, so, <clears throat> all right, First Kings 19. And uh, this title of the message is Help in Loneliness, Help in Loneliness, First Kings 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain the prophets, uh, uh, the prophets, all the prophets of the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do so to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Uh, Jezebel, they were her prophets. She was the one who really brought in the, the Baal worship, and, and her prophets got killed. And, and she was a pretty nasty woman. And, uh, and when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under, under a juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. And said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. All right, let's pray. Lord, thank you for the chance to uh, uh, preach the word of God. Thank you for the scripture, and I pray today you'd use this, Lord, in our lives, or if not our lives, may we get knowledge to help someone else, because this is the big problem. We pray you'd uh, uh, work in a great way, and uh, we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit and for um, just grace and uh, help us, Lord, speak to us. And thank you for the scripture today. Um, I pray that uh, this you have the answers to what society needs. People don't know it, but uh, it's in there, Lord. And we just pray that today we would uh, grow and learn from this. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. There is a big loneliness problem in our society, and it's an unhealthy thing. Every type of study, psychology, every type of uh, uh, information we have says loneliness is one of the uh, most dangerous things for people to have, and yet it's very, very common. You would think with all the e ability to connect with people, um, it, we wouldn't have a loneliness problem. Um, you understand, years ago, if you wanted to call someone, if you wanted to call someone in the 253 area code for the 206 area code, you had to push a 1 on your phone, and it cost more. Okay? And a lot of phones didn't have long distance on them. They called it long distance. Okay, when you called an area, and so it was very expensive. And so, you know, you, and, and so if you wanted to call somebody, you'd have to have long distance. Um, and then many times, you know, you just have to write a letter and then wait for the letter to come back. And, and, and nowadays, you can FaceTime, I can FaceTime with people all over. I do it all the time. I FaceTime with people in different countries all the time. And, and you would think that people nowadays wouldn't be lonely, but there's been a breakdown of family. There's, uh, there is. <clears throat> a horrible substitute um, for uh, personal interaction, which is called social media. And it's, it, it looks like food, but it's, there's no nutrition in it. You don't really know the people a lot of times. And so there's a big loneliness problem in, and in our culture. And, and because families aren't close, the elderly feel very lonely. People don't visit them or um, estranged families or just uh, different situations. And, and uh, loneliness is a big problem. And, of course, it's always uh, uh, been like that. And we find uh, uh, later on, let's go down to verse uh, uh, 9. Here's Elijah. And, he, and he, came, he came thither to a cave and lodged there. And behold... The word of the Lord came unto him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he says, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy, command, uh, uh, thy covenant and thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. He said, Look, I've, I've served you, and yet here I am, I'm alone, and... And, and they're trying to kill me. And I'm, I'm alone. I'm the only one left. 
and uh, and and everybody's forsaken the Lord. I'm the only one who's serving God. And uh, in verse, uh, the same conversation again happens in verse 13. It says this in verse 13, it says, And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in a mantle, went out and stood in the, uh, in the evening, um, uh, and then entering into the cave, and behold, uh, there came a voice in him, saying, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets of sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. He's alone. Um, he says, I only am left, and he says, I just want to die. And, uh, and, and so he's very depressed, and, uh, and, and so he's struggling with this. And it's a, it's a tough thing for him um, that he's in a situation. You can see his struggle there, and he's in self pity and and uh, loneliness and sorrow, and all these things are happening. And and there's so many there's so many factors here, so many things going around this that actually have a lot to do with a lot of people and their loneliness problems, uh, and and what we go through. And 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 there, there's a lot of things that are really important that we notice here. Just some thoughts on loneliness. Number one, loneliness can affect the strongest people. Loneliness can affect the strongest people. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God looked at man when he made him and said, it is not good that man should be alone. Now, a lot of people think, you know, because they're introvert or they're, they're loners by nature, in which I very much, to an extreme, am a loner um, <clears throat> in my nature. Um, we think we're okay alone, but you're not. It is not good for a man to be alone. You need people. Um, people, when they get alone... <clears throat> Um, every fault in them and every quirk about them grows to extremes because people help balance you out. People pull you back, okay? And, 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 and you, know, you know, I joke about it, but the, the lady who's left too long alone ends up with 15 cats and, uh, and, 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 you know, kind of extreme in their emotions and fear and things like that. The man left alone too long has got, you know, 75 guns and a missile launcher and is in the middle of the wilderness, you know, because you just become your extremes. And he, you know, and, and it becomes strange. And people are trying to tell you, hey, you're getting kind of weird there. You need that. How many guns can you shoot at once? And uh, do you really think, though, every helicopter that flies by is really looking at you? Yes. And, you know, it's get kind of weird. That's just what happens. You get extreme and weird and strange. And, <clears throat> and, and it's not good for you. You get depressed. You get uh, all kinds of extremes. Uh, you don't understand. You're out of balance, no matter how many normal people tell you you are. And, and because it's not good for you. It's not good for you. Some people get so depressed, they, it, they, you know, they take their own life. Uh, uh, some people um, become so extreme in their emotions. Some people go crazy. It's not good for a man to be alone. That's why it's actually against uh, a lot of laws in a lot of nations, a lot of national laws, to put people for long in solitary confinement because of the mental damage it does to them. Okay? And, and so it's, 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 it can happen uh, to anybody, and it's not good. Elijah was an incredible man of God. The situation is, is humorous if he wasn't really hurting and struggling and wishing that he would just die. The, 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 the situation is humorous because <clears throat> he just stood against an entire nation. He's that strong of a man. He stood and, 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 and withheld rain uh, from the entire nation, and then he went and <clears throat> brought the whole nation and said, you're going to serve God. And he said, these, 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 all these hundreds of false prophets, I'm standing against them. And he called down fire from heaven. That's a strong man. This is this man who just turned a nation back to God. And there he is sitting under a tree wishing he'd die when he's alone. And, and he, this strong man suffer from loneliness. So it's not a weakness if you're lonely. There's nothing wrong with you if you're lonely. It's normal. Okay? It's normal and it's okay. Strong people have that. He had just stood against 850 prophets in the end that were there. The king, the queen, he stood, he stood up before the entire nation and, uh, and brought a national revival. <clears throat> and, uh, and all this stuff is done. And, and there he was, miserable. I only am left. It's just me. And I'm miserable, and I wish uh, I could die now and be done. Uh, number one, loneliness can affect the strongest people. Number two, and by the way, <clears throat> um, loneliness uh, isn't all circumstantial. 
Sometimes you can be around people and still be lonely, okay? And we'll talk about that uh, in, in a while here. Number two, be careful about letting one person send you into a tailspin, okay? So we got him. He goes in chapter 18, right before this event. He goes, and, he, and he's standing there, and he stands against the, the prophets of Baal and all the false prophets, and then all, all the, the king had been you know, pursuing him and saying, You've, you're troubling Israel. He says, I'm not troubling Israel. It's you and your family. And, and the whole nation's in idolatry, and he's preaching against them, and he's withholding rain, and everybody's mad at him, and he's like, I don't care. You know, and he stands strong, right? And then after the Mount Carmel happens and all, all that great event, what happens? One woman writes him a letter and says, I'm going to kill you. And he just, that's it. It just put it, that's what did it. After all that standing, after all, everybody's against him. It hadn't rained for three years. And everybody's blaming him. I don't care. You quit your idolatry. We'll get rain. It's not my fault. It's your fault. You've been wicked. Standing against everybody. Then one woman writes him one letter. She's going to kill him. And he just, he's done. All right, I just want to die. I'm done. He runs for his life. And I want to tell you, there are, it's a weird thing. It's, it's almost like a gut punch you're not expecting. You can be doing good and standing strong through all kinds of circumstances. And then there's one person who just sets you off. Who pushes your buttons. Who says the wrong thing at the wrong time. And you're just like, oh, I just forget it. Not, and you're just done. Be careful about that. I literally think there are people anointed by Satan with a power to mess you up. And I don't know how they can do it. I don't know how the smallest little thing, I mean, one comment sometimes from that person. They just say one little thing. And it just, oh. and all of a sudden you feel like the told worst loser in the world. And be careful about letting one person put you into that. Chapter 19, verse 1, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And Walt, with all, he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent messengers unto Elijah, saying, let, uh, so let the gods do to me. And more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of these, of one of them, by tomorrow about this time. And she really threw that, threw him off. D David, people love David. The nation loved David. They sang songs about everything else. But when Saul came after him, David was thrown out of proportion, and he sat there in a cave and said, no man cares for me. It just brought him into depression. And be careful about <clears throat> that. I often tell pastors this. I say, look, people don't say, people don't say the good things. You can have a congregation of 200 people and 199 of them heard from God and were spoken to and encouraged. The 199 aren't coming to you. The one who didn't like what you said and didn't agree with you is coming to you. And what they do is they get in their mind that everybody is against me. All of them are just looking at me saying, I don't agree with them. And they kind of get this persecution complex because of one person. And, and that's what can happen to you is you can overreact to one person. You think everybody thinks that. This person says, you know what? I really don't like you. I think you're really kind of a rude person. And you say, am I a rude person? Everybody probably thinks that. You know, notice the other day I walked up to say hi to somebody. They didn't say hi back. They didn't hear you. Okay, but you start imagining things, right? And one person throws you in a tailspin. Am I crazy? Or are you all staring at me like, man, what did Pastor Barham? He's nuts. And, uh, and one person can really throw you off, right? One person at work all of a sudden just says something to you, and all of a sudden you're despised and never going to work again. And then you tell people, everybody works hates me. No, it's one person, but the one person just, because bad people are very vocal about what they don't like and some people can really throw you in a tailspin and don't let a jezebel ruin your whole life and affect you and don't overreact and think that you're all alone and nobody likes you and and nobody cares you might have one relative that's a problem but you might have a bunch of relatives that aren't there are those people who are in power to do this number three don't aid to your loneliness. Don't aid your loneliness. Don't increase it. Look at 1 Kings 19. 
So she writes him a letter, verse 1 and 2. And when he saw that, verse 3, Elijah, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. By the way, if he could call down fire from heaven, which he did in the previous chapter, he could call down fire on Jezebel. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to freak out. He didn't have to run for his life. He had the power to let it not rain for three years, call down fire. God had anointed him in so many ways with so much power. He, I mean, God can take care of him with Jezebel. But he, he just, he overreacted. And don't age your loneliness and increase it. First, and then chapter verse 3, um, he, 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 he says, And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. Okay. She was a dangerous woman, and okay, I get it. You're going to get away for a while. And came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. He had a servant. The servant was with him through everything. But he comes to Beersheba on the way to the wilderness and leaves his servant there. And then he goes into the wilderness and says, I, even I, only am left. <laughs> well, here's some math here. Two minus one equals one, right? But here's a weird thing, and I believe it, it literally is demonic. I think it's a devil. The devil, look, here, the man in the, in the graveyard is, is dwelling among the tombs by himself. Isolation, the devil loves to isolate you. Notice he takes the, he takes it in Luke 15, he takes the sheep and takes it alone in the wilderness. When you're alone, a whole bunch of biblical help from James 5 and other things, you are isolated and now it's easy to kill you. Now it's easy to devour you. It's very easy when you're alone. And he feels alone, but he also left his servant who was very loyal and went through all kinds of things with him, but he left him there. And, and he goes in the middle of the wilderness and he thinks he's alone. He's not alone, but he thinks he's alone in life. He thinks he's alone in the situation, but he's aiding in his loneliness. Because the devil cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. He isolates you. Nobody understands. Nobody wants to talk to me. Nobody wants to help me. And so I'm just going to go be alone. And the devil says, I got you. Yes, I got you alone. Good. Now the people I put in your life, your spouse, the people that protect you, your friends, your church, you are away from them all. Now you got no protection. I got you. And then he starts pounding you. It's, it's, it's amazing how, um, how, how when someone, uh, you can just watch it, they start uh, getting this, this, this thing about, I'm isolated and, and I got to get away from people and this and that, and they get it at church and then it does not go well. And they think, and, and it pushes them away from church, away from good Christians, their friends, their family, and then they get out of church. And now they're in, now they're in all kinds of trouble. And I've never seen it work well to get alone and get away from your spiritual family, your godly friends, your mentors, all those people God puts in your life. But you will not want to be with them when you're coming to a season of attack. You will not want, the last people you want to talk to, you just want to be alone. And it's a very dangerous thing. And he added to it. Added to that becomes the next thing is, the, is along with this, you're adding to the danger of this thing is physical neglect. He ran, he, he ran for his life. He came to Beersheba, and then he ran into the wilderness a whole day's journey. That's a lot of calories burned, a lot of time without eating, taking care of yourself, without resting. He's exhausted. And I want to say, you're in a lot of danger when you're exhausted. Your emotions run high, uh, and, and you a lot of times don't think real clearly when you're exhausted. And you make extreme decisions, and a lot of times you're, you're because everything's magnified when you're tired. <clears throat> you're in a lot of danger. Now, I'm not saying don't ever be exhausted. I've been exhausted a lot of my adult life, and <clears throat> I'm tired. Let me rephrase that. I think tired's okay. The world's run by t tired people, but being exhausted, you gotta be a little careful about. You can really make bad decisions. You can really, um, your mind uh, is, it doesn't run real well. And you don't, you're not always rational. Watch what God says to him. And this is, it's so practical and pragmatic. Here comes, you know, the angel to him in the middle of his thing. And I'm so glad God comes to us when we're struggling and does this, uh, does these things for us. Look at, at verse five. And it says, and he just said, I wanted to die, verse four. And as he lay down and s slept, notice he was tired. 
under a juniper tree, behold, and an angel uh, uh, touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. He was neglecting his body. I want to say nutrition has a lot to do with your mental well-being. They're, they're very tied together. Okay? Just hand your kid Coke and Cheetos for two days straight and, and candy and watch what they're like the next day. You will say, uh, you know, my, you know, your child, my child is, is as legion inside of him. I mean, what is wrong with my child? Nutrition affects your mental health. Okay? You don't get enough iron. You don't get enough vitamin B. You don't get enough vitamin D. All these things affect your emotions, can put you into depression. Just a lot of things. Not enough rest not, and just abusing your body with, with all kinds of bad things. It affects it massively. <clears throat> and, it, and it does these things. And, uh, and God says, arise and eat. And he rose and did eat and drink. And, uh, and, and, and so... Um, <clears throat> And, and the angel, verse 7, and the angel of the Lord came to him a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he rose and did eat and drink. And so he slept and ate and drank. And sometimes your body is just, you've run into the ground. Uh, a lot of times uh, you're not resting well, you're not sleeping well, um, you're, 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 you're not taking care of yourself. And so there, there's just a neglect where you add to the problems of loneliness with neglect, with uh, isolating yourself and all these things. And I think that, that you need to be careful about these things. Next, this is hard. You ready? You've got to logic over emotions here because this is very difficult. Most people don't catch it. When you're not thinking right, you don't know you're thinking, you're not thinking right. It seems logical. Okay? But <clears throat> next, realize, okay, this may be the devil's exaggeration or illusion. This is so hard when you try to help people to come to say to them and say, there, I, nobody cares about me, nobody loves me. It's not true. But you don't understand. You don't under, you don't know. Look, <laughs> The devil or your imagination or whatever it is has deceived you. And many times it's not what you think it is. But there are points where you're not thinking clearly and a story has been told you and it seems real, but it's not really real. And you aren't as alone as you think you are. Sometimes you don't know it. Sometimes you don't know much how much people care about you or a lot of things. This is really common. Look at, look at uh, chapter 19. <clears throat> God deals with his physical health, feeds him and gives him rest. And then he says, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he says, I'm, I'm alone. Nobody, nobody's with me. Um, and, and nobody wants to serve God. Now, here's the thing. There's a bunch of things that are strange about this. Uh, is He says a few things. What are you doing here, Elijah? He says, I, even I only am left. He says, the whole nation is cast down your altars. And they're, they're in idolatry. Look at, verse, look at verse 10. And he said, I have been... Very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Amen. You've cared about the things of God. And for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets of the sword. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Okay, let's go back to chapter 18 here for a second and, uh, and see uh, where it is. Chapter 18 and verse 39. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elijah said to them, take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down, uh, 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 down to the brook Ekron and slew them there. The nation had turned back to God, killed the prophets of Baal, and proclaim the Lord is God. They weren't forsaking the Lord anymore. The rain was going to come. They were going to have a national revival. God was going to kill uh, Ahab and, 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 and Jezebel. And, 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 and good things were coming. And the nation turned back to God. They just had a huge victory. But he's, he's thinking that the whole nation just wants to kill him. He says, they are trying to kill me. No, she's trying to kill you. The nation has said the Lord is God. But you're, you're thinking this thing that isn't true. And you're, you're going into darkness. You don't have to. Now let's look at, as God responds to him in chapter 19. And God asks him again. He says, verse 14, and 
He said, I have been very jealous of the Lord God of hosts because thy ch- the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down thine altars and have slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left, they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, go return thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, um, anoint uh, Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, um, of, uh, of Adonim, um, uh, Meth, uh, whatever that is, uh, shalt thou anoint to be judge, uh, or to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that <clears throat> him that escaped the sword of Hazel, uh, shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped of the sword shall Jehu, uh, of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet have I left me 7,000 in Israel, all knees which have not bowed a knee to Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. He says, look, I have 7,000 of you. You're going to anoint a king that's going to kill the, the Ahab and Jezebel. You're going to anoint another guy here. You're going to have another prophet that's going to take your place, and he's going to help you. And I've got people. You're not alone. I, even I only am left. The whole nation is against you. And, and they're all seeking to kill me. All were untrue. <laughs> but he thought they were true. He thought they were true. The imagining that people do when they're in this situation where they're being kind of oppressed and, and pushed away from everybody, the imagining they do. And, and having been that person many times who people imagine things against because I'm, I'm there to help, uh, all of a sudden, pastor doesn't like me, pastor didn't say hi to me, pastor doesn't say hi to a lot of people. Uh, he just, uh, he's on a mission all the time, okay? It doesn't mean I don't like you, it just means I'm doing something and I can walk by people all the time without saying hi. And, uh, and, 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 people, and then, then people who start doing ministry say, man, they won't talk to me. And I'll say, hey, so-and-so's wondering, you doing okay? They don't like me. I think they, I think they're, they're, and all of a sudden they got this story made up. <laughs> like, and I go tell the person, they say that you, you know, hate their guts and you think that, you know, they're mean and you, you think that the other week that you wouldn't go to lunch with them. Well, they asked me to lunch and I, I was, I had to go to work and I told them I had to go to work. Well, they think you did it because you don't like them. What? They're crazy. Welcome to my world. And, uh, and, 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 and because you start, I mean, I, now look, is it demonic where you start making up things? Is it just emotional problems? Is it just poutiness? You want to feel persecuted, you know, I, and, and that makes you feel good about yourself. Everybody's against me, but I'm, you know, I haven't anything, whatever. I don't know what the reason is. I just know that there's things that are illusions that happen, and there really are people that care about you. But you might feel like nobody cares. People who love you be saying, why won't they let me in? Why won't they let me help them? What is wrong with them? Why are they just not? And, 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 and you're, you're being pushed to isolation. And loneliness is, is not good for a man to be alone. And so it's not good for us. And so we're getting pushed there. It's not everybody, Elijah. It's just Jezebel. But he thinks it's everybody. Let's go to Psalm 142. I want to show you this. Psalm 142. David goes to the same thing. David's not thinking clearly here. In Psalm 142, another strong, great, amazing, you know, person here, David. Verse 3, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. And the way wherein I have walked, they privily laid a snare for me. I... Look to my right hand, and behold, there is no man that would know me. Refuge uh, failed me. No man cared for my soul. Okay? So, this situation, <clears throat> it matters greatly that you understand where David is. David's in the cave of Adullam. Okay? He had um, been serving Saul, and Saul tried to kill him a couple times. And then, in the middle of that, um, uh, uh, Jonathan comes and says, you know, I'm afraid my dad is really after you. Let me check, and, 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 and I'll let you know. And, and sure enough, Saul was going to kill David. So 
Jonathan signaled to him. They hugged. They made covenant each other. Said Jonathan loved David as his own soul. And he shot the arrow, if you remember the story, and said that that meant that you got to get, get out of here. David runs. He goes to his cave of Adullam. And at that point, it says uh, his family joined him. And everyone that was in despair and distress and debt, they all joined him. And then his mighty, his mighty men joined him there. And they all came to him in the cave to follow David. And David sat there in the cave and looked around and said, Refuge care, uh, failed me. No man cared for my soul. Jonathan just gave you his royal robe and loved you as his own soul and risked his life standing up to his dad for you to protect you. No man cares for your soul? Your mom and dad don't love you anymore? Your brothers? They all came to you in the cave risking their life. All these other people. But no, David says, no man cared for my soul. Not Jonathan? But Jonathan's going, David, I just risked my life for you. No. I, notice I never chased with my dad, chased you with my dad. I told my dad he's wrong. I love you as my own soul. I, and I know you're going to take my place. I should be the next king. But I'm giving you my robe. I lo uh, no man cared for you, David? Yeah, somebody cared for you. You just, you were in that spot. And to stop and shake your head and say, I know it seems like this, but it can't be this. I know these people care for me. And, and to shake yourself out of that, it'll take, it helps you with your loneliness. God has given you people. See them, call them, tell them, even when it doesn't seem comfortable or like what you want to do. God has given you people you can bear your heart to and talk to, and you should do that. <clears throat> Next, I gotta hurry. Tell the Lord your loneliness. We see this in Psalm 142 since we're there. Um, Psalm 142 and uh, verse 4, it says, I look at my right hand and behold, um, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison. Notice that. He knows his soul's in some kind of depression. That I may praise thy name. The righteous uh, shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. In his prayer, he began to get hope. That's where Elijah found his hope, is God said, what doest thou here? And he began to tell God what was on his heart and what he was feeling, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And he began to tell him, I'm the only one left, and no man cares for my soul. And God began to help him. But he told God his burdens. He shared it with the Lord. And that's where it has to start. Because... You can tell God everything, and then God can begin to solve things. And, 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 and you can always cast your burden upon God. There are times in life where you and God are going to wrestle through something, and God has just, just kind of taken you and, and kind of made it so nobody else understands, so you can be drawn to him. And, 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 but, but, but then he's going to get you back to people. But he is the one in every situation. First of all, he's the one you tell your burdens to. He's the one you cast your care upon. God will help you in your burden. And that's what helped both Elijah and David and others in the Bible. God has given you uh, the, the opportunity. Just tell him your burdens. He talked and God heard and God helped him. Let's look at Psalm 27. Psalm 27. I believe you just need to talk to God. Psalm uh, 27. <clears throat> and, uh, and verse 10, what a beautiful verse this is. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. You know, sometimes people do fail you. But God will always take you up. God will always be there for you. God will always help you. Bring it to the Lord. We said, number one, loneliness can be uh, can affect the strongest people. Number two, be careful about letting one person uh, send you in a tailspin. Number three, uh, don't add your loneliness. Number four, um, realize there may, there may be the devil's exaggeration or illusion. Uh, number five, tell the Lord your loneliness. And number six, realize God has someone for you just around the corner. First Kings 19, you just have to make it through this season. And God's got blessings coming. God's got help coming. First Kings chapter 19, and I love it. 
He's in the wilderness. He has all this stuff, all these struggles. And uh, <clears throat> in verse 15, it says, uh, Go ye into the way the wilderness, uh, Damascus, and when thou comest, um, anoint uh, Hazel, the king of Syria. And then he's going to go through and say, these people you're going to anoint, and these people you're going to meet, and you're going to, be, you're, going to, you're going to make it through this stuff. And then all the way down in verse 19, so he departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who is plowing with 12 yokes of oxen before him. And uh, with the tw- and uh, and he with the with the twelve uh, uh, with the twelfth and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle on him. And he left his oxen and ran after him. I want you to notice verse twenty one. And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and bowled their flesh and instruments of oxen and gave them to the people and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Elisha is going to be the person who takes what Elisha was doing and double it. But he was also going to minister to Elijah, help him, serve him. His biggest blessing of his ministry was Elisha. And it was right after his season of loneliness, he would get this best friend and, it, and, and he would be his servant and he would minister to him and help him. And, and, and I love that phrase that says later on, it says, Eli, Elisha poured water on Elijah's hands. You know, <clears throat> just think you don't have running water in the sink. You have water in pots. Okay, try washing both hands while you're holding a pot. It's just a symbolism of somebody's there, a servant. Poor people didn't have that. And he has this servant who's just taking care of him and meeting his needs and, and, and being a blessing to him and walking with him and ministering unto him. And he had that person who's going to be what he was, who understood him, who had the same gift as him walking beside him. But it was, it was coming. And in your loneliness, whether you're single or whether you're just a struggling or whatever your situation is, understand God has people for you. And if you'll just keep serving God in due season, you'll be blessed. And God has those people for you. Even when your father and mother forsake you, the Lord will take you up. God understands loneliness is real and hard. And though we will be lonely sometimes, and that should draw us to God, it does not mean that it's hopeless. It does not mean that God is not going to send you somebody. It does not mean if you'll stay faithful to him, God is not going to bless you and take you out of it and send you the friends and everything else you just got to not add to it and then you have to just decide to keep serving God even when you're struggling and God is going to meet that need because God is the one who said it is not good that man should be alone just don't miss it miss it by leaving the will of God miss it um, by by um, isolating yourself or pushing the people away that God's put in your life God will give you enough until he meets all those needs but you just can't ruin it by foolishness, by sin, by backsliding, by quit serving God so you're not in the will of God to meet the Elisha God has for you. And don't miss it when God puts that person in your life. Thank God for it and let them be in your life. And when they come and say, I want to talk to you, and you know what they're going to talk about, don't run. Don't say, I'm not going to answer my phone. Okay? Say, you know what? I, they want to talk to me. You know what? I, God put them in my life, and, and I have a friend. And thank God for it. And, and realize that. So this loneliness thing is real. So when I say realize it's, there is an illusion sometimes, I am not saying that you're not lonely, and sometimes it's not lonely life. It is. There is legitimate situations with people you love passing and moves and all kinds of things that happen, and, and just you know losing friends and switching jobs and changing schools and a thousand different things where you can get lonely. I get it. It's real, and it's, 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 it's something you have to be careful about. I'm just saying that God cares, and he'll get you through it if you don't do foolish things. And realize that, you know, um, that, that sometimes you got to share your heart when you don't feel like it. When you're that person who, who keeps things yourself. Like me. Okay? And you got to talk to people and do those things. And, and it's good for you. And God, it's, it's not good for us to be alone. And, and loneliness start. And please be that friend to other people. Maybe your life is not such that you struggle with loneliness a lot. Everybody does some days or whatever. I'm talking you're, you're okay. You've got a good spouse. You've got a good situation. Or, or you're not lonely. Then find lonely people and help them. Because it's not good for them. And care about them. 
and 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 listen to them and, and check on them and and uh, and be their friend and 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 because it's not good they can really get in a lot of danger amen all right let's go ahead and pray father i thank you for these truths we've seen elijah and david and other people we could go to sometimes people fail us lord and all we've got is you and our loneliness and sometimes you send people but either case lord i pray that you'd help us to take the right steps and not to make foolish decisions not add to the loneliness and not isolate ourselves. <clears throat> i pray lord that we would uh, have those friends to sit closer than a brother. We thank you we can give you our burdens. We thank you we can talk to you about all these things. And I pray you use this lesson to either help us in our loneliness, because all of us will face it, but more than that, help us uh, also when uh, when we find someone who's struggling with that and maybe not doesn't have the wisdom because they've not heard a message like this and, and don't know you. Maybe we could go be their friend because they don't know how to talk to you about it yet. I pray we would be that help to people and use our experiences that maybe our loneliness we suffered to go help somebody else. Please, Lord, th help us to follow this message and use it in our lives and uh, to, to bring it to you. Help us through our loneliness. Even Elijah, you didn't want to live anymore. Lord, you brought him out of it and brought him to victory. And may that happen to everybody here whenever they're in that spot. In Jesus' name, our